Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about how to set up a QNAP NAS for video editing. Now, today I'm going to go through how to set up the connection between your PC or Mac system and your QNAP NAS. In this case, I'm utilizing a 653D, but the steps for today's video will work on pretty much any QNAP NAS. But it's worth highlighting the connection in question and the speed at which you can achieve will differ depending on the NAS you choose and the interface you choose. I would recommend for video editing utilizing 10 gigabit ethernet and there are 10 G cards available to upgrade this device for as little as 85 pounds. On top of that, there's connections such as utilizing the Wi-Fi 6 upgrade from uh, QNAP themselves, which is a, a, it's a bit slower, but it is wireless in connectivity. And of course, you can go bigger and better with larger network cards, larger network adapters uh, for your PC or Mac system, and of course, utilizing things like Thunderbolt on the Thunderbolt NAS series. All of those will give you greater speeds. But today I'm gonna to talk you through how to set it up, why it's advantageous, and what parts you're almost certainly going to need. Now let's touch on that second point first. Now, why would you want to edit your video from your PC or Mac system on a NAS? There are reasons, and I'll go through some of what I think are the more choice reasons. Reason number one, you have far, far more storage to play with. Right now, you've got this 6-bay NAS here. If you fully populated it with even just 10 TB drives, you'd have 60 terabytes of raw storage to play with. Yes, you'd have to factor in the RAID, and yes, if you are in close proximity like now, you will hear the clicks and whirs. Right now, you can hear it, just occasionally, um, of the system, so you have to make sure you're not in close proximity, but that's an enormous amount of storage to play with. On top of that, it allows you to reinvent your workflow. If you are editing from your system on a NAS, you can then use that same NAS to introduce um, intelli uh, you know, a far more diverse sharing options with clients and other team members. They can take care of the smaller things, screen grabs, metadata, packaging of the data in a way of doing a completed product um, to be utilized in your home or business environment for uploading and sharing where necessary. Also, things such as non-linear editing or NLE have led to the idea that when you edit files on the PC, the maintenance and the keeping the historical data that you edit will still be maintained on the NAS. And thanks to things like snapshots in the background and multi-tiered backup strategies and the ability to revert data a great deal better on NASes, it means that if you do make mistakes or want to change a file back to a previous version, it will be a great deal easier on a NAS. But it's not all perfect. There are reasons why editing on a NAS might not be for you. Um, if you do edit on a localized, say, NVMe SSD inside your system, then the speed you get from that NVMe will surpass that of a thousand megabytes per second. Oh, it's just booted there. Now, the speed you get of that NVMe may be very, very, very fast indeed, but it is also worth remembering that NVMe SSDs are exceedingly expensive. Even a one terabyte will cost more than most smaller two to four bay NAS devices if you go for the more Enterprise Pro series. Obviously, that doesn't include drives, though. You can go to 2 TB and big, but uh, bigger, but if you are looking at, say, 4K video editing, most completed 4K projects of over an hour are absolutely huge. And if you do have to keep a large record of your files, chances are you won't keep them here. You'll keep them off-site, perhaps on a connected NAS or on a DAS system. So if you're going to go down that route of editing externally anyway, NAS is a good way to go about it. But let's talk about the parts. Let's talk about what you may need. Most NASes arrive with one GBE or in the case of more modern NAS solutions, greater connections than that. You're going to need to at least utilize 2.5 or, or 5 GBE in order to edit video. They're just too big a file to have to be editing on even granularly within the file. Hence why I do recommend 10 GBE overall. Now, in order to connect to your system, if it is a wireless system, such as a laptop, to these kind of devices, without you know having too many wires or you're using a system where you can't upgrade the interface ports you've got two core options the first is utilizing usb adapters such as qnap's very own usb 3 to 5 gbe connection this allows you 
to open a 5 gigabit Ethernet connection between your USB system and a connected NAS. Not just QNAP either, and it allows you to edit up to traditional SATA SSD speeds via this connection. On top of that, there's also Thunderbolt to 10 GBE connections. Now, this is Sonic solution, known as the Sonic Solo 10G, but QNAP have their own range of 10 GBE to Thunderbolt solutions in both one and I believe two ports coming soon. Um, it arrives in copper and fiber based connections and are all bus powered. You simply connect the Thunderbolt connection to your PC or Mac system and then directly connect to the PC, uh, to the NAS system, like so. So connect your Thunderbolt connector and then on the other side, take the network connection of your NAS and connect it in like so. And as you can see, after a while, you heard that beep there of the Thunderbolt connection being recognized. I will now be able to connect directly to this NAS system. And from here, we can then set up the files and folders in a way that the system, my PC in this case, will be able to edit those files live. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make the switch to my screen here. And I'm going to show you guys how to map a network drive uh, with a shared folder and to set up the NAS in a way that photo editing software such as Final Cut, Resolve, Adobe, PowerDirector and more can all interact with the NAS for video editing. Let's make our way to the screen. So as obvious as this first step is going to be, make sure you've got your NAS set up completely. So make sure in the case of QNAP that you've downloaded that QFinder tool from them. It's completely free and it's available for Mac and PC systems. If you've set up your NAS for the first time, um, go ahead and make your way into it like so. And you'll get the login information there on screen and log into your NAS. Now, for those of you that haven't set up your NAS yet, do find some of my guides online where I can talk you through exactly how to set up a QNAP NAS for the very first time. From here, we're going to be doing several steps. We're going to be going ahead and creating a brand new shared folder on our NAS and then we're going to go ahead and mount that shared folder on our local PC here in order to make sure that we can interact with it. You can ignore that message on screen about the file system not being clean as I've pulled these drives from another NAS just for the case of this video. I recommend you make sure your data integrity is kept in check in the background and there's lots of ways to do it. But now you're on the main desktop here of your NAS, the first thing we want to do is head to the control panel. From the control panel, we want to go ahead and create a brand new user for our video editing. So if we go into the user section here, what we want to do is create a new user that we can default to to do our editing. We can use the admin account if we choose, but I recommend keeping the admin account clean and unconnected to other services. So now we're going to create this new user. This new user we're going to call video edit and give them a fairly standard password. Unfortunately, it's telling me that password's not strong enough. And then from there, you can add further information if you want, but it's not strictly necessary. If you've created groups on your NAS, go ahead and put it in a group and you can say which files and folders they can access as well as the applications they can access to. For now, I'm going to leave this as default, but you can change which files and folders they can access later on. So now we've created this new user video edit, and you can call them whoever you want on your system, we can do the next step. The next thing we want to do is create a shared folder. You can create the shared folder here, or to make things easier, you can go down to File Station. And from File Station, you'll be able to create this brand new shared folder. Head into the shared folder section and select it right there. Give this shared folder a name. I'm going to call this again video edit. So if you've got multiple volumes on your NAS, make sure to select the one that's best suited to your needs based on the storage media inside and the RAID configuration. And again, the more drives you have in a RAID configuration, the greater the speed you're going to achieve. From there, you can also select different users that can access this folder. And right now, the admin user can access it, but we're also going to allow video edit user to access it too. So from here, we're now creating our brand new shared folder. 
this brand new shared folder is the one that we are going to be utilizing with our video editing software. The next thing we need to do is head back to QFinder Pro. Now there are multiple ways in which a person can um, interact with data on the NAS in a far more native way. That isn't to say that using your web browser isn't sufficient and you can access files and folders here, but practically no video editing software on your local PC or Mac system can communicate with your NAS via the web browser. What you need to do is create a folder on your PC or Mac that's visible natively within the software that you use day to day. So what we're gonna do is go back into QFinder Pro, find our NAS and right click and scroll down to Map Network Drive. Now again, this is not the only way to do this. From an application known as QSync to utilizing certain LUN and iSCSI targets, there's lots of ways in which you can point your PC at the NAS. But mapping a network drive is by far the easiest. From here, we need to enter the information from the account we created earlier. And then it will show which folders this user has access to. Go ahead and select video edit and then map network drive. Give the letter, give it a letter, in my case the letter Q. Click finish. And boom, there is our Q drive. It's now the NAS folder right there visible on our local system. Now just to put it into perspective here, what we'll do is right now, as you can see on the My Computer folder, this folder we've created is completely empty. It's just got the recycle bin and snapshots folder. If we go into another folder here, go into this shared folder, find ourselves some data to play with. We've got different files and folders there. We can go ahead and select a nice small one just for demonstration purposes because the large one might take a bit of extra time. We'll copy that file, go back into our video edit folder, paste it in, and it's a small file, so it'll be near enough instantaneous. And if we make our way into that folder there, we can see that the file we just copied over is now in that shared folder. It means that we can now interact with the data on the NAS using our native file explorer applications. Now from here, the next thing you need to do is move your library into that folder. If you have an archive of photos and video recordings that you use in your photo editing, this is where you want to put it. Now there are some very easy ways to do this. First, you can just go ahead and copy files and folders that you want to transfer into that folder quite easily. And if you copy them in, as you see, we're connected to this NAS via 2.5 GBE um, because that is the ports and connections on this particular NAS, but there are greater speeds available if you use a 10 GBE enabled NAS or a Thunderbolt NAS. As you can see, we're copying these files over. And if we go into the NAS via the web browser, go into video edit, and as you can see, those files and folders are being carried over live into there. The other way, of course, if you want to transfer files and folders into that folder, the probably less user-friendly method is to simply drag and drop into the web browser. Then that will copy files and folders over very, very easily and quickly. But again, that one's not really too intuitive and I don't recommend doing it that way. And lastly, you can use tools like QSync and numerous other QNAP tools available on their own website to synchronize individual folders on the NAS with your local PC. Although I think copy and pasting from a map network drive works just as well. Now, when it comes to using your video editing software, depending on the different software you use, if we go for a, a, a DaVinci Resolve, how you set about editing files on the NAS will differ for you. Sorry, the fans of my laptop are kicking in. I'm just gonna move the mic over slightly. Now, Different software will behave in slightly different ways. Some of them will ask you to preset where your media lives um, on the NAS. So in the case of here, if we go for a new project, click new project, give it a name. And within DaVinci Resolve, we can either manually import individual files and projects, 
or you can go into the preferences section and change exactly where DaVinci Resolve finds all of your archive to pull in. And there's lots of more there's lots more options with regards to effects and cached and sh uh, cache data and shadow files that can all be configured in the preferences section there. And what that means is you can now edit uh, media on the NAS utilizing the hardware resources on your PC or Mac system. Same goes for if you're using tools like Adobe Premiere Elements and PowerDirector. Both of these tools simply allow you to change the default folders of your system. Just make sure if you're editing older projects that utilize your um, archive that you change the default folders on your uh, PC or Mac system to point at the NAS directories. It's quite straightforward and there's lots of options open to you. Now, moving forward after this, we have to talk about backups. Perhaps you already have a myriad of backup, soft, uh, backup uh, options in place, but it's worth remembering that if you are going to be editing files on your PC or Mac system via the NAS, then chances are that means the completed projects that you create will be on the NAS, and therefore the NAS is no longer a backup. The NAS is the only resource that contains those files. Consequently, it's highly recommended that you have a multi-tiered backup strategy in place to make sure your data is safe. Now, there are lots of options available. QNAP arrives with the fantastic um, Hybrid Backup Sync 3 tool that allows you to back up numerous different, um, onto numerous different platforms. Uh, NAS to Cloud, NAS to USB, uh, NAS to NAS. I recommend checking out that tool for your backups. As well as that, making sure that you have the snapshot system in place will allow you to create historical backups of your data long term and therefore ensuring you are able to revert your data to a previous version. There's lots of options open to you as well as the likes of hybrid mount that allow you to mount cloud services and connect those cloud services via um, a network gateway between your NAS and the cloud and therefore when you're editing distribute those files to more than one location so you won't lose them if one of them fails. But this has been how to set up a NAS, a QNAP NAS for video editing. Speed will be key and there's lots of things to remember moving forward and I have covered a lot of these subjects on other videos. Details such as refining your network connections and making sure that the MTU or jumbo frames is set as high as possible. Do check out my other videos on video editing to learn more about these devices and the best ways to configure your NAS's network and your connection with it long term for the better. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more and I will see you next time.